For the past few years, there has been an online contest called the Summer of Math Exposition, where creators make videos, blog posts, interactive sites, and more in an effort to introduce more people to higher mathematics by the beauty that is present in mathematics. While this is not my submission, see my previous video for that, this contest begs an important question. What makes mathematics beautiful? This in itself presupposes the answers to two other questions. Can mathematics be beautiful? And probably one of the biggest questions in all of philosophy, what is beauty? It is these questions that we'll seek to approach in this video. In my research for the question of what is beautiful, I came upon the definition of one Thomas Aquinas, saint in the Catholic Church, and probably the goat of the scholastics. I chose his definition because it has a wonderfully mathematical flavor, in that he breaks down beauty into three properties, integritas, consonantia, and claritas, which we will spend most of this video discussing. One tendency of Aquinas is that he draws upon a ton of sources, such as in the same passage, he cites Augustine as recognizing consonantia as being part of beauty. Aristotle also identified something approaching integritas and consonantia in his definition for beauty. However, I cannot rule out this definition as coming from an earlier source. If anyone knows such a source, please comment below and I will pin it to the video description. Even if you don't, please like this video, comment your other thoughts, and follow for more mathematical content. Now that we have established the definition, let us go into its three parts. The website on artandaesthetics.com, see the link in the description, gives sub-definitions that I liked, so I'm using those as a starting point, as well as some common English translations of these three Latin terms. First we have integritas, or integrity, wholeness, or perfection. It must not be deficient in what it needs to be most itself. In other words, everything should be there, and the greater the defect, the less beautiful it is. For example, if a face is missing a part, we notice it and get a little creeped out by it. The Mona Lisa is missing eyebrows, which gets some people to think that she's always looking at you, but that's it. On the other hand, if you're missing a nose, that immediately stands out. I'm showing a picture of Voldemort here to avoid freaking people out and getting the video flagged. In music, if a certain note we expect is missing, we turn it off. So if I hit you with the do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, without giving you the last note, you're going to remain tense until I bring out the do, or, if the version of the song replaces the vocals with an out-of-tune recorder, see the many memes about that, people get upset. Integrity is also important in mathematics. If you have a proof that misses a trivial case, that tends not to be a problem, but if you are missing an important edge case, your proof might go from okay to outright wrong. In a previous video on derivatives, my argument for the chain rule was not completely rigorous, but I showed the load-bearing steps and stated even then that it was only a sketch and not a full argument. Next we have consonantia, consonants, proportionality, or harmony. Its dimensions should correspond to other physical objects as well as to a metaphysical ideal, an end. In simpler terms, the parts should all work together efficiently to get to the desired effect. In music, if the parts don't work together or are out of tune, you get a middle school orchestra. Again, I'm not playing that to avoid getting flagged. In faces, it has been extensively shown that we like symmetry, and the more asymmetric a face is, the less pleasant we find it, as we see here with this picture of Uncle Ruckus. Geometry as a subject spends a significant time drawing things in proportion, but that does not mean that the golden ratio is immediately the best proportion, and it especially does not mean that you can throw a golden spiral on something and say, here, the sake of geometry thing says it's beautiful. St. Thomas has no time for your heresies, and neither do I. So stop. Get some help. Anyway, we can still apply this concept to mathematical arguments. If one step in an argument is disproportionately long compared to the other steps, a common trick is to split an argument into lemmas or to separate computations. But if the computations deal with too many cases, dissatisfaction and even suspicion of a proof can arise. A great example of this was the four color theorem, which stated that maps only need four colors to avoid adjacent color matching. In the 1980s, a proof came out that had a computer check the needed 1,834 cases. That number of cases has since been reduced to 633, but some out there still keep their eyes open for an even simpler proof, leaving the problem as bait for mathematical cranks. The final part of our definition is claritas, or clarity, radiance, and brightness. It should clearly radiate intelligibility, the logic of its inner being, and impress this knowledge of itself on the mind of the perceiver. One way to think about this is that nothing superfluous or distracting is present. 
This idea helps make some sense of why so many care about fighting acne and having clear skin, in that it can distract from the integrity and proportionality of the rest of one's face. If you enjoy a particular song, chances are that there is some sound that stands out from the rest, clarifying what the song is trying to achieve emotionally. A lack of clarity also makes it easy to dislike certain genres of music, he said looking over at mumble rap. I mean seriously, rap is so much about rhythm and poetry that it became a backronym. I can't appreciate it if I can't understand what you're saying. My goodness, stop it. Anyway, turning to math, clarity is why people tend to fall in love with particular fields of math. This is what characterizes the proofs in the book, a term coined by the discrete mathematician Paul Erdős to describe a book wherein God has all of the most elegant proofs written down. Clarity is why some argue that category theory and its arrow-chasing arguments should be taught to kindergartners. This is the variable that most math content creators try to maximize when presenting their ideas. One thing this particular aspect highlights is that beauty as defined here is intelligible. By this definition, a beauty that appeals to the mind is even greater than a beauty that appeals to the senses, or using our examples, that mathematics at its most beautiful is greater than a beautiful face or music. And with that definition, I'm guessing some of you are thinking something along the lines of, no wait, beauty is subjective, it's undefinable. I hear you, but I disagree. While this definition as presented deals with the properties of the potentially beautiful object, I think it may also apply to the subject of the beauty. If one lacks wholeness in the faculty which one receives the beauty, for example, the beauty will not be received. I cannot appreciate the Mona Lisa without eyes to see her, and I cannot appreciate differential equations without a calculus class first. This same goes for proportionality. One cannot fully appreciate something beautiful without due attention. It would be ridiculous to appreciate a song on a single listen, and the beauty of mathematics is impossible to apprehend without some amount of study. But there is an upside. The more time spent ingesting beauty, the quicker one gets at digesting more. It is why fans of a musical artist can more rapidly assess a newly released song, and why experts in math can more readily learn new math. Finally, clarity on the part of the subject is also important. One cannot appreciate a painting if they forget to wear their needed glasses, or appreciate music on a phone speaker, nor can one study if their mind is in a fog. All of this is to say, you can improve your capacity to find things beautiful through habituation and putting yourself in a position to physically and mentally to receive beauty. I hope this has come to shed some light on beauty, and will allow everyone watching to come to see math as possibly beautiful, and if that fails, to at least be more open to beauty as it comes. Thank you for watching.